Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This song is called Praise Yah Forever. The artist is Adi Yah, A H D A I Y A H. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. You guys woke up on a Saturday when you could be sleeping in to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. I will be praising Yah forever in my eternal life. It is six o'clock. Good morning. My name is Elaine Strozier. I am the founder and CEO of A Woman, A Wife, A Mother Ministries, where we are teaching the women, honoring the wives, and establishing joy in mothering. I'm so glad that you all woke up on your Saturday to sleep in, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I am very, very, very um, grateful and um, I don't know, I just feel like, God, we really do love you. Like, I just praise God, praise God um, to inconvenience ourselves, to um, wake up out of our slumber early in the morning to hear what God is saying. If you think about it, when the Israelites had to get up early in the morning to uh, get their manna, it wasn't like get up Monday through Friday and get up early and collect your manna so that you can eat and then sleep in on Saturday and Sunday. No, they had to get up early, seven days a week to collect their manna. And so I pray that the the Lord will see and honor your your stick to itiveness, honor your dedication and your sacrifice to him. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will see our hearts and that you will see us striving and pressing towards the mark. I pray in the name of Jesus that you see those uh, who it might be difficult, that if the flesh wants to do one thing in the morning, but we um, override the feelings of our flesh and uh, hear and submit and obey to the spirit of the lord god today we're collecting our manna we're collecting our daily bread fill our cup lord to the overflow fill us until we want no more this morning open up our hearts and our minds to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to us the church this morning and we will give you the glory and the honor and the praise amen 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 we want to yada. Amen, Lavelle. We want a relationship with Christ. Me too. I want a relationship a relationship with him as well. Um, I don't know about you, but it was it was hard for me to get up this morning because I went to bed very late last night um, preparing for our message on Sunday. And I am excited about our message on Sunday. I'm also excited to, uh, on Sunday evening, probably around 7 o'clock, um, to come on Facebook Live, my son and I, who will be the DJ, Isaiah, will be the DJ for our mom prom. And we're just going to have fun with you all on Sunday, talking about our music that were in or that were the hits. And so we're going to ask the community to help us build our playlist for mom prom. Nevertheless, we are in Matthew this morning for our command. This command, wow. This command is coming from Matthew 15 and 4. Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. And here's what it says. It says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So as I began to meditate on this, um, I think it was about two days ago, I heard the Lord, the Lord say, some of you women who are going to be listening to this and who are listening to this need to forgive your mother. You need to forgive your father. 
You need to honor them with your forgiveness. It doesn't mean that trust will be restored, but love and compassion will be restored through forgiveness. I'll read the command again. <clears throat> Matthew 15, 4. For God commanded, he commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he saith, He that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Let me read this. I'm starting in, I'm going to read it from the easy read version. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. Chapter 15, verse 1 from the easy read version. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus. They, when you read the Bible, I hope that I want to encourage you that when you read the Bible, allow a, a movie to show up in your mind. Like, don't just read this from the outside looking in. Go inside of it and become a part of what's being read. That's a that's a um, one of the things that I do to um, when I study the scripture. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus. They came from Jerusalem and asked him, Why do your followers not obey the traditions we have from our great elders who lived long ago? Your followers don't wash their hands before they eat. Now remember these scribes and these Pharisees in, in uh, Matthew chapter 5 there at the end, it says that our righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of these religious leaders. It has to exceed the righteousness because their righteousness was under the law. They were not operating under um, the grace and in operating in love to the Lord from their heart. It was just traditions of men. So they're saying, Rabbi, how come your fellows don't wash their hands before they eat? And Jesus answered in verse 3, and why do you refuse to obey God's command so that you can follow those traditions you have? Throwing shade. Like, he was so witty. Like, a person would come with something cray-cray, and then he would come with a question. And then he would just put them in their place. He wouldn't have to cuss them out. He would just ask them a question to make them think. That's how the rabbis taught. They would ask them questions. They would answer. They would ask them another question. So let's just make sure we're getting this in our mind. So the Pharisees asked, why do your followers not obey the traditions we have from our great leaders who lived long ago? Your followers don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus, the original G. <laughs> yeah, he is the original G, Demetria. Jesus answered, and why do you refuse to obey God's commands so that you can follow those traditions you have? God said, you must respect your father and mother. And God also said, whoever says anything bad to their father or mother must be killed. But you teach that a person can, person can say to their father or mother, I have something I could use to help you, but... I will not use it for you. I'll give it to God. You are teaching them not to respect their father. So you are teaching that it is not important to do what God said. You think it is more important to follow those traditions you have. You're hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he spoke for God about you. Those people honor me with their words, but I am not really important to them. Their worship of me is worthless. The things they teach are only human rules. Did y'all get that? They were tripping and asking God, why didn't the people wash their hands before they ate? And God says, um, ask them, and why do you refuse to obey God's command so that you can follow your traditions? Like these people were literally disobeying God's commands so that they can uphold their traditions. Now we may say, oh my gosh, that is something. But we do it today. 
a lot of us who grew up, I didn't grow up in church, but a lot what I have noticed is that a lot of people who grew up in church have grown up under religion and tradition of men. And when you try to t teach them the way, the truth, and the life, they're like, because th they have been ingrained to believe that, and walk in and uphold the traditions of men. And then when you give them the gospel, when you give them the word of God, they go into like some type of fit on the inside. Tell a person so that they can bring a cup of coffee in the sanctuary. Remember the day when they wouldn't even let you um, chew gum? And now you go to churches and you can get a muffin and a cup of coffee? What? The only person that's supposed to have anything to drink is the pasta water at the altar. That's foolish. Now, are you supposed to respect the household of God? Yes. But where does it say that it is a sin for somebody to bring in a bottle of water or for a woman to have their children in church? Some ch churches, you cannot even bring your children in the sanctuary because they don't want any noise, any distractions. I get that. Some parents don't even know that their children are being a distraction and they will ignore the cries of their children to listen. God was saying, you are so traditional that you are disobeying the commandment of God. He said, you are a bunch of hypocrites. Like these men were literally telling, teaching people that they didn't have to obey their parents. And God told them that you better obey your parents or else you're going to die. And these parents, these um, traditional religious leaders, whitewashed tombs, were telling the people, you don't have to help your parents financially. You're giving that money to God. What? Stop it. Let's go a little bit deeper. Are you with me? The command is, honor your father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Here it says in the scripture, Exodus 20 and 12, Exodus 20 and 12, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honor your father and your mother so that your days will be long. Here's another one, Exodus 27, 17, Exodus 27, 17. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Meaning, if you don't do right by them, take care of them, provide for them, you will be cursed. We're going to get, we're going to, we're, we're working here. Matthew 15 and 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. We just read that. Exodus 6, 1 through 3. You know what? I want to look something up real quick. I did not. This is sticking out to me and I did not look this up um, er, earlier when I was um, studying, but I want to look this up right quick. I want to look up the word curse it. So I'm going to my Strong's Concordance. I'm typing in Exodus 21, 17. I'm clicking on Exodus 21, 17, and I'm clicking on the word cursed. And that means to be trifling, to be of little account, to slight, to be insignificant, to make your parents despicable, to treat with dishonor. says to be trifling <laughs> well let me just define trifling oh to be trifling means to be unimportant insignificant so in other words when you curse your parents you treat them as if they are unimportant insignificant um, you teach, treat them like they are trivial and minor. 
When you curse your parents, you are treating them as if they are despicable. And they are not esteemed. Whoa. And when we treat our parents like this, we turn out a certain way. And when our parents treated their parents, they treated their parents a certain way. How does a parent learn how to respect God? By learning how to respect their parents. A lot of women that I minister to cannot respect leadership. They have mother wounds, so they have issues with me because they have issues with their mothers. Because their mothers were um, not, they did not train them up. They did not respect them. They did not love them like they needed to be. They don't know. Their psychology does not know how to receive love. So when another woman comes to them and gives them love, they don't know how to receive it. So then they are in turn trifling and they teach, they treat that spiritual mentor or that spiritual mother in a dishonorable way. Then they bring a curse upon themselves. They bring calamity upon themselves. And it's because they have not learned how to respect their parents. Why don't pa people know how to respect their parents because their parents have provoked them to anger and we're going to talk about that in a minute but you grown lady if your mother or your father have provoked you to anger it is your reasonable service to what forgive them be honorable towards them if you felt like your mother or your father was your enemy the bible says to love them because you're going to have children. And if you think that that bitterness that's on the inside of you towards your parents, it's not going to come out in your parenting, you've got another thing coming. I meet a lot of women who say, my parents beat me. They, I got extension cords. I got hairbrushes. They, they called me all kind of words and names. So I'm not spanking my children. And my parents didn't give me what they want, so I'm just going to bless my kids and give them whatever they want. You've gone from one extreme to the other, but you're still in the same sin. Here we go, ladies. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Honor your father and your mother. The, but before in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, it says, Obey, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Then it says to honor them. So obeying them is doing what they're saying to do, and that's the outward. But honor is that reverence, that honor that we were talking about a few minutes ago um, in fifteen four honor does that make sense let me look something up real quick these words are sticking out to me um now and it didn't stick out to me when i was um when i was studying so this is definitely for someone um to honor to honor means to fix the value to reverence it's for the value of something belonging to yourself. You have got to honor your parents, my God, means that you have to treat them in such a way that you are valuing something that belongs to you. I didn't put my rings on this morning, but my wedding ring goes on this hand, on this finger. And my wedding ring is of value to me. My first set of wedding rings, somebody stole them. They were of value. It meant a union that my that my husband and I had. When I lost those rings, I was sick down in my shplach nasamai, down in my belly. Then my husband bought me a second pair of rings. They got lost. Those things were value to me. Like when they got stolen the first time, I was sick. But when it happened again, oh my gosh. He bought me another ring. Another ring. That ring is of value to me. I treat that ring with honor because that ring is of value to me. The question is, 
for those who have not been treated well by those who raised them, whether it was adoptive parents, foster parents, whether your parents were your aunts and your uncles because your parents couldn't take care of you, you still have to treat those people who raised you with honor, with value, because they actually belong to you. They are your parents. They were your caretakers. So you've got to treat, when you, when you say honor, it means to value of something belonging to yourself. So when you dishonor them, you're actually dishonoring yourself, disrespecting yourself. Does that make sense? So we as parents can in turn teach our children to devalue us because we have devalued our parents. That sin is still on the inside of us, and by default, we teach them dishonor and disrespect. Parents, if you think buying your children things and stuff is parenting, you are wrong, and the Lord is going to get you. He's going to rebuke you. Giving your children everything they want as an opportunity to love them, show love is sin. I'm going to show you what the Bible says love is. You not spanking and chastening your children because you're afraid that they're not going to like you the way you don't like your parents is sin. The scripture says that we are supposed to chasten our children. When we don't do that, we are teaching them to devalue us, which in turn is shortening their lives. Don't disrespect yourself like that. You hate your dad for what he did. You hate your mom for what you did or your aunt or your uncle or your foster care worker or your adoptive parents. You hate them. You hate yourself because if you hated your, if you loved yourself, you would honor them. This is how serious parenting is. Parenting is not just the celebration of the pregnancy. Parenting is not just the, the, the fun that we have eating the cake at the baby shower and exchanging gifts. That is nothing. Parenting is not just saying congratulations on the Facebook page because the baby is here. Parenting is training your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord because they are your value. They are a valued um, gift from the Lord. When I lost my rings, that was a valued gift for my husband and I was sick for days. I was hurt for days, looking everywhere, turning over, going through trash cans, trying to find that thing that I valued. Are y'all with me? I feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go to, let me just teach you this right quick. In regards to talking about honor and respect the Hebrew word that depicts honor um, one of the Hebrew words is kabod k-a-b-o-d or k-a-v-o-d and it is often rendered as God's glory so the word kabod comes from a Semitic root or the original root that is actually comes from Egyptian language um, um, the Egyptian language where the Egyptians carried on massive building projects and the word was used to express the idea of being weighted or heavy. Have you ever seen those beautiful pyramids that those Egyptians made years ago and they're trying to still figure out how did they make it? They had a huge responsibility of, of moving those weighted pieces of material from one place to the other. That is the expression of the kabod, weight or heaviness. So, um, some people would say that they feel the kabod of God in worship, but that's not the weight that this kabod is talking about. It is a weight used in a building project to help create a balance when moving or lifting large objects. A woman that is in her house, that is a wise woman build her house, that is a building project. You are moving. You have weight on you. You have weight in your house, a, good, a huge weighted responsibility to balance your children to let them to teach them how to operate in the spirit realm and in the natural realm 
Kavod is the transference of the weight of an object to another to su provide support and make the load easier to carry. Kavod is the transference of weight of one object to another to provide support and make the load easier to carry. Parents are supposed to take their weight, their responsibility, their wisdom, their knowledge, their fear of the Lord, and transfer it onto their children so that when those parents become weak and feeble because of age and they can no longer do for themselves, then what happens is those those um, uh, children who have received the weight can in turn honor their parents. A millstone. I don't have any visuals for you guys this morning. Um, the glory or kavod or kavod of God is the respect of God towards us and his taking the weight or a burden off of us. His, his, um, Sherry was teaching us yesterday that his burden is light. So when we have a burden on us, we're not supposed to carry it. We're supposed to go to the foot of the cross and say, God, I'm yoked together with you. This thing is bothering me. And you stay there in prayer until you feel like, you now a lot of times when we come out of prayer, we say, oh man, I feel like a burden is lifted. Because you've transferred that heavy weight, that thing that you were carrying, you've transferred it to him and he's able to carry it. So I'm going to stop right there. Mm, I'm going to stop. Let me just tell you this. There's another word, an Aramaic word used in Matthew, yakar, Y-I-Q-A-R, yakar, Y-I-Q-A-R, which simply means to bear someone's burden. So all these different words um, in regards to what it means to to honor it it means to bear their burdens to help them to make their burdens lighter as they age they will more and more need their children to honor them to respect them to value them bear their burdens to the point of even having to feed them or dress them this is what this commandment is about you do to your parents what they did to you or you do to your parents what they didn't do for you because you love the Lord and because you forgive your enemies. What time is it? <gasps> the command is, for God commanded saying, honor your father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother that is trifling towards them. Let him die the death. This is what the scripture says to you as parents. Now I'm speaking to you as parents. Teach them diligently. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord is your one God. This is Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your passions, and with all of your soul, your breath, your life, and with all of your might. That's the highest degree of diligence and effort. And these words which I command or order you this day shall be in your heart, shall be in your emotions, in your passions, in your mind, in your understanding, and thou shalt teach them. Teach what? The word diligently unto your children. To, to teach them diligently means to continue to do it and don't stop. And you shall talk or commune of them, them what? The commandments of the Lord with when thou sittest in thine house. So when you're sitting in your house, you uphold the standard of the Lord. When you're sitting in your house, you walk in the things of the Lord and you teach them to your children. And when thou walkest in the way, when you're walking here and there and when you're going to and fro, you as a parent become the walking, living word of God and teach it to your children. And when you lie down, when you get ready to go to bed, it's Jesus, Jesus, and you are walking in that thing yourself. And when you rise up. 
and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be like frontlets between your eyes. In other words, it needs to be in your soul, in your mind. What needs to be there? The word of God. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. A lot of times, if you ever come to my office or if you go to a Jewish person's house, you will see the mezuzah. You will see the mezuzah on their door. And in the mezuzah is written this right here. This is called the Shema. It's their pledge of allegiance. And basically what they're telling people, when you come up to my house, we are a people who love the Lord. We are a people who love our children. And all of us together respect and honor the mikdash dash me at the miniature sanctuary that we live in there will be no disrespect or honor to Yahweh the most high God and there will not be any disrespect or honor for parents to children and children to parents because we are teaching our children that they must honor God therefore they must honor us they must and when you teach your children to honor your the parents first then the then you're teaching them how to honor God let me take you to another verse it says, Proverbs 1 and 8, my son, in other words, children, hear the instruction of your father. In other words, he's saying, children, listen. Remember, hear means to obey, to, to listen, not just to hear, but to listen. When you listen, you obey. My children, Obey the instruction, the correction, the doctrine, the teaching, the discipline of your father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Do not leave or reject or abandon the law, which is human and divine instruction and prophetic teaching of your mother. It's time for me to get off. It's 6.30 and it's time for me to get off of here. But I'm not going to get up off of here because we are in a flow. And I, most of you all don't have to go to work right now. So we're just going to flow. If that's okay, throw up some, 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 some thumbs. Throw up some thumbs if that's okay. And if you have to jump off, God be with you. God speed with you. And um, yes, so I'm seeing those thumbs. And you can watch the replay later. Okay, so Proverbs 1 and 8. It's Proverbs 1 and 8. If you can throw that up there. Proverbs 1 and 8. He says, my son. In other words, my children. My children. My son equals my children. Hear. That means listen and obey. My children Obey the instruction of your father. That word instruction means the chastening. Instruction means chastening. Discipline. Correction. Doctrine. Teaching. My son, listen to the discipline and the chastening and the doctrine of your father. And forsake not. In other words, don't leave or reject or abandon the law of your mother. The law is human and divine instruction. It is prophetic teaching. A wise woman builds her house, builds her children. Thank you, Melissa. Why? For they shall be. They shall be an ornament. What is they? They is the instruction and the law. The discipline will be an ornament. The correction will be an ornament. The um, chastening will be an ornament. The human and divine instruction and the prophetic teaching will be an ornament of grace. What's grace? Favor, elegance, charm, acceptance. Grace is favor acceptance, elegance, and charm. When children, when parents teach their children to obey the instruction of their father and not forsake the law of their mother, then they will be graced and favored. Some children have bad attitudes. They're disrespectful. They don't obey their God, their parents, or the laws of the land. They don't obey at the schoolhouse. They do whatever they want to do. And the hard truth is, 
I wanted to show you a book, but it's at, it's at, it's on my bookshelf at the church. But the hard truth is they are a product of the tree that they came from. I read this book and it showed me everything. My son was about three or four and Hannah was about two years old. And I read that book um, to train up a child. And I saw that everything that I thought was doing was utterly and completely wrong. There is, um, there is a way that seems right to us in parenting, but the end thereof is destruction. This is why I cannot stand the fact that many churches don't teach practical parenting then what happens is the children are provoked to wrath provoked to anger because we didn't know but now that we know we've got to forgive our parents for not knowing because we made mistakes do you see how it's like a circle for they shall be an ornament of grace to thy head and chains or a wreath a beautiful collar or necklace around your neck it's like being yoked to the lord sherry your neck is your stature your achievement your development your status when they yoked when we are yoked with the lord we are we become his achievement his status we develop in the things of him so this is the importance of teaching our tra and training our children. But our parents didn't do that for us. Forgive them. Do not be trifling towards them. And here's another one. Train up your child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. To train means to dedicate, to inaugurate your children, infants from the womb in the way the journey that he should go when you look up that word um the way he should go it comes from the hebrew word pay p-e-h which means a mouth the mouth gives instruction so it's saying sacrifice dedicate inaugurate that's what it means to train train them up in the way that they should go by your instruction and when he is old, when he has hair, when he is goes to their bar mitzvah or their bat mitzvah, 12 and 13 years old, he will not depart from it. He will not turn aside from it. Why? Because you've made their path narrow. Forgive your parents. The commandment says, and... For God commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. Honor them because they are your value. They are a part, a part of you. Whatever they did, forgive them because guess what? If you take blood from you and take blood from them, your DNA is the same. They are your value. You've got to value them. You are them. You are your parents. You are their DNA, spiritually connected. A lot of people who adopt children, um, they're not just adopting them into their family. They have to deal with their birth parents' situations. They have to deal with the, the birth parents' sin. When a parent brings a child, an adopted child or foster child, into their home, they're bringing the body, the spirit, and the soul of that child into their home. But that child is not a part of their adopted or foster parent's DNA. That child, though living in the the Mikdash Mia, the miniature sanctuary of those adopted parents or those foster parents, still have to deal with the DNA of that child because that child comes from a specific man and a specific woman. That's why when children get older, they want to go and find out where they came from. Yes, mom and dad, you adopted me and you fostered me and you trained me up. Thank you, auntie and uncle for training me up. Thank you, my next door neighbor, for, for taking care of me and making sure that I achieve great things. But I want to know who my mama is. I want to know who my daddy is. 
because children are always connected to their parents. A, a parent can beat their child. A parent, a, a, their small children, they could be cracked out on the couch sleeping, heroin in their arm, and their children may be taken away, but the child always wants to go back because they were created to love and honor their parents. I feel the Holy Ghost all tingling all up in here. Hallelujah. How do parents provoke their children to wrath? The Ephesians 6 and 4, Paul writes, Ephesians 6 and 4, Paul writes, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. How do we provoke our children to anger? Well-meaning overprotection is a common cause of resentment in children. Overprotection is, a, is the fear of the parent. So when you are overprotected because stuff happened to you or because your parents didn't do this or your parents did this and now you're overprotective of your children, you're actually parenting them in fear and sin does not bring forth righteousness. Parenting our children in fear is sin and it provokes them to resent the parents. Parents who smother their children overly restrict where they can go and what they can do, never trust them to do the things on their own and continually question their judgment, build a barrier between themselves and their children. How do you provoke, how do we provoke our children? Um, favoritism. Isaac favored Esau over Jacob and Rebecca preferred Jacob over Esau. That dual and conflicting favoritism not only caused a great trouble for the immediate family, but has, a continued, has continued to have repercussions in the conflicts between the descendants of Jacob and Esau. Favoritism? Let me tell you why parents tend to favor. Because one child is more like them. And that child who is less like them, they don't want to deal with that because it's too hard. It's too much work. Favor, does God have favorite, favorites? No, he loves everyone. Everyone doesn't love him. He has no respect of persons. How in the world can a parent favor one child? It's because they don't understand the love of Christ. Favoritism brings about resentment in the other children who are not being favored. And that child who that that child who you are favor, favoring, they will manipulate you and twist you up like a straight up pretzel. Why? Because they don't honor you because you haven't honored God because you are you favor them. That's how you provoke them. And the ones that are favored, a lot of them don't even listen to their parents because they already know that they can manipulate the situation. A third way parents provoke their children is by pushing achievement beyond reasonable bounds. A child can be so pressured to achieve that he is virtually destroyed. My son said that people, um, that people who have gone to college and they are like 4.0 students, like they're getting A's. A's, they end up getting on drugs or committing suicide. Something is not balanced. Could the could it be that those parents pushed the achievements and put things on them that was never meant to be? You're going to be the child that's going to take over the business. You're going to be the child to get us out of blah, blah, blah. You're going to be the child to... you Putting undue responsibility on children can provoke them to hate you. A fourth way children are provoking is uh, children are provoked is by discouragement. A child who is never complimented or encouraged by his parents is destined for trouble. The Lord says, "The thoughts that I have for you are good and not evil, to give you a hope and a future." God says, "You're fearfully and wonderfully made." That means that you were embroidered. It's like you were you were hand um, stitched together. He says, my thoughts for you are so good that they outnumber the grains of sand on the earth. So God's thoughts for you are, whoa. So how is it that you are 
raising your child or somebody else's child and you don't compliment them. You're always telling them what they did wrong. They washed the dishes. Mom washed the dishes, but you didn't sweep the floor. Mom made my bed, but it's hanging on one side. Ma, I got dressed, but you don't match. Ma made the soup, but you didn't put more enough salt in it. They will grow up to resent you. A fifth way provocation occurs is by parents failing to sacrifice for their children and making them feel unwanted. Children who are made to feel that they are an intrusion, that they are always in the way and interfere with the plans and happiness of their parents cannot help becoming resentful. Always at work, always at church. Let's talk about that. Do you think you go into church all the time, being at every conference, always helping out and neglecting your children at the house is wise? That is foolery afoot. Being at church all the time does not mean that you are in the kingdom. The Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. If your children are not being drawn to the church, you are in religion, not in relationship. You don't need to be at every women's fellowship. You need to be at home reading a book. You can't go to that women's retreat. You need to be at home cleaning up. Your child has a soccer game. Now, let me take it to the other extreme. All that stuff and all those activities that you have your children in because you feel guilty because you couldn't get that when you were older, you're provoking your children. You're not, they're not even in the things of the Lord because they are doing too much other stuff with other people and neglecting the things of, there's no balance. When you have children, your life is not your own. No, you can't get those new shoes because then children need groceries. No, you can't hang out and stop giving your children to everybody else to raise like the children's church minister. It is your responsibility to train your children up in the way that you should go and in, in the way that they should go. So when you're doing too much with too many people and you're neglecting them, you will provoke them. A sixth form of provocation comes from failing to let your children grow up and at a normal pace, chiding them for always acting childish even when they do even what even when what they do is perfectly normal and harmless does not contribute to their maturity but rather helps confirm them in their childishness. Children are going to do things that are childish because they're children. Like there is a a developmental stage that is normal. Children run children run little two-year-olds they run if you discipline them in an unbalanced way for running you will provoke them you will put shame on them and guilt children spill things at the table every time I turn I can't. you've never spilled anything before tell them uh oh we spilled something go clean it up you make the mess you clean it up go and then when they start cleaning it up, it's going to be sloppy. Give it to me. Give, give me. Clean it up my stuff. You can't do nothing right. Provoking. But yet they see us in church. Lord, prepare me. Hallelujah. To be. Let them be children. Always fussing. Stop it. They are not you. You've been washing the table and washing clothes for years. Going back to the commandment, and I'm getting off of here. The commandment is, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father, O oh Lord, have mercy, God. The Bible says, Proverbs 24, 3. Proverbs 24, 3. Hallelujah, Koshaya. Proverbs 24, 3. It says, Through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding is it established. Through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding is it established. 
through wisdom. That word wisdom means, this is Proverbs 24, 3. Wisdom means skill in administration. Women, you are administrators in your home. Women, you are administrators in your home. An administrator is a person responsible for running a business or an organization. They are a superintendent, a chief, a head, an executive, a manager, a director, a supervisor. The scripture says, through wisdom is an house built. Through skill and wisdom and in administration, lady, you are the administrator of your home. And sister, if your mother or your father did not properly administrate, forgive them and honor them. Through wisdom is a house built. That word house is the Hebrew word bayit. And it means a family, the household of affairs. Through administration, wisdom, skill is a family built. It's established and set up. And by understanding, is it established? We are not properly establishing our home because we don't have understanding of how it's done. Understanding means intelligence, insight. It's a personification of a teacher. A woman, a, 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 a mother and a father, they are teachers. I don't, it doesn't matter if you are foster parents or biological parents or aunties or uncles or neighbors or adoptive parents, you are still responsible to establish your children and to build your house. This is why the Bible says a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one plucks it down with her hands. The Bible says in Psalm 127, I think it's Psalm 127. Lord, let it be Psalm 127. says, mm, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except Yahweh build the house, to build means to repair, to establish a family. That except the Lord establishes the family, the house, they labor, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. That word labor in vain is the word irksome. It means to cause an annoyance, to cause weariness, to cause a vexation. So if the Lord is not building the house, then what we're, what's happening is there is a vexation in there, a spirit of vexation and weariness and annoyance in the house. And we're seeing it manifested through the behavior and the attitudes of our children. It says accept. The Lord built the house. They labor in vain. That word vain, it comes from the Hebrew word that means to cause ruin and destruction. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. And I can go and teach verses 1 through 5, but I'm not going to do that. The, 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 the command today was to honor your parents or else you will be cursed. Don't be irksome towards your parents. Don't be unforgiving towards them. Obey the scripture. Forgive person, the parent who you feel like is your enemy. And let's not sit up here and act like it's somebody else. God is not speaking to other people. He's speaking to me. He's speaking to you. If you are in your mind thinking, mm, so-and-so should be up here. No, that's pride. You need this. You're not the perfect parent. You're not the perfect mother. We are making mistakes. We fall short of God's glory. This is why a woman, a wife, a mother ministries was established to teach women, honor wives, and establish joy in mothering. I am done. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your commandment this morning told us to honor our parents God commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that curseth father or mother let him die the death we don't want to die 
We don't want our children to die because we have provoked them. Let us forgive our parents and our caretakers that we will plant seeds in our children's hearts that they will forgive us because this thing of parenting is hard. And let me tell you something, ladies. You may be called to preach the gospel. You may be called to prophesy and to be an evangelist. You may be called to pastor. You may be called to teach. But if you're not doing it in your household first, Jerusalem, then Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, if Jerusalem is not first, you are out of order. If we have not trained our children in the Lord, we have failed them. God, restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have destroyed. Forgive us, O oh God, for what we have done in our ignorance. Cindy Trim said, ignorance is a weapon of mass destruction. Let us, O oh God, be flint-faced to pull up weeds. Let me read this, God, because I can't quote it right because I haven't committed this to memory. Where is it? God, help me, God, help me, God. These people need to get off of here before their children wake up. <laughs> it's Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah, this is what, this is what, this is what is going to happen. You are, see, I have set thee this day over nations, Jeremiah 1 and 10, to to root out and pull down and destroy and throw down and build and plant as women, as wives, as mothers. Teach us to root out, to pull down and to destroy and to throw down the things that we have created so that we can build and plant again in the name of Jesus. You need to stop doing all this other stuff and be about the business of building your home and we thank you for it if you have any questions go ahead and type them up after i hit finish and i'm going to sit here for a little while and answer your questions in jesus name amen shalom alekin